Now the topic of today's discussion is making impressive scientific presentations by just identifying the bad slides which we have in our presentation. I am Dr. Saurabh Shravastava and uh, I'll be taking up this discussion with the postgraduates of my department. So to start with, we all know that we have been making scientific presentations to be presented either in the department, in the college premises or outside the college premises in the inter-college presentations or anywhere in the conferences or the conclaves which we participate into. Making our presentations more impressive, more effective and to win the prizes by presenting our studies, researches, cases all throughout the world on the online platform. Actually, the basic idea of presentation always should be that whatever documentation we have made when we have done a work, that documentation has to be presented in front of the peer community. Peer community should identify that documentation in such a way that that community, that person who has not done the study or seen the case should identify each and every aspect of that uh, presentation itself, just like that person has himself or herself done it. That should be the basic motto of presenting anything. If we have done something, we know that we have done this in a certain methodology which we have devised or taken from somebody else and formulated something and modified that methodology. So that modification should be emphasized upon taking into consideration that the basic methodology is known to all. What we understand by the peer community is that we are working on the same platform. The peer community means that whenever we are working on for example, if we are working on oral lichen planus cases, we are presenting a case of oral lichen planus, then the community to which we are presenting the case of oral lichen planus may, meaning that if that community is able to understand all the aspects of oral lichen planus, that community is knowing oral lichen planus, then only the idea of presenting to that community is materialized. We have to make that presentation so that the, our presentation will be very much accepted in whatever ways we present. Accepted means that the community will understand whatever we are presenting, each and every aspect of the presentation, be it a study, research procedure or a case presentation. So to proceed with the scientific presentations, basically all the presentations will have the base as the same. So we are, we will be talking about the basic concepts of preparing the presentations because making scientific presentations is nothing else presenting than presenting our documentation. So a scientific document will have certain headings and subheadings will be, which will be different from a general presentation. So moving on to the next slide. It is a bit slow. The next slide, it says that whatever things we are going to cover in this presentation, basically, I have also made a presentation for the drawbacks of the presentations. So whatever things I will be covering in this presentation have to be outlined. They have to be given as a content. So whatever presentation in how many parts ever we make, we have to give the contents means that whatever we are going to present in a span of half an hour, 45 minutes or one hour, we have to present it in these, these, these headings. Like I will be presenting today's lecture in the headings of outline, 
the slide structure, fonts which should be taken, colors which, which are appreciable, the background which is not distracting, graphics which can be presented in the slides, spelling and grammar has to be seen when we are preparing a text presentation. To conclude the presentation and the last one will be the questions which will be put for the audience. So the first slide will be this. Then we move on to the math material or the matter of our presentation. The first part of the contents was outline. So if we say we are making an outline, outline is the point wise presentation of the various headings or subheadings which are there in the presentation and they appear as a content of our presentation. So when we are making an outline, it may be constricted to either one slide or it may exceed from one slide to the other slide means the first or the second slide it will be the outline of our presentation just like we have seen in the previous slide of this presentation then when we have made an outline or contents we have to follow the order of that outline for the rest of the presentation it means in all the presentation throughout after presenting the content we have to follow the same order in the same order of the headings and subheadings only the main points are placed on the outline slide means the content slide for example if we use the titles of each slide as the main points then the main points are only put on the content slide and every slide should have a heading or a subheading. We'll see later on that every slide will be having because whenever we see the template of the uh, presentations, there is a column for the heading. So we always try to put the headline or the heading only and subheadings we do not put to save the space or expand our text. Actually, that is uh, not very very appealing to the eyes when we see the presentations presentations should be made in such a way that whenever we are transiting from one slide to the other slide the slide transition and the text transition in terms of size should not vary because it will make or give stress to our eyes now if we see the structure of slide what is a good structure of slide? When we are using one to two slides per minute of the presentation means that we are giving at least 30 seconds to 40 seconds for a slide to present. It should have some content, some matter written in it to be elaborated. So when we say that the matter has to be elaborated, we have to write the matter in the form of points rather than complete sentences and those points should not be more than five points per slide that means four to five points are okay if we are giving four to five points in a slide that will be considered as a good slide structure then we should avoid using too many words when we are using too many words in the slide that means we are making our presentation more and more cumbersome to read instead the powerpoint presentation should have little words but more of elaboration at the time of presentation so using keywords and phrases will be sufficient now the slide structure which is said to be bad now if we see a slide which is presented in this way where it is written like this page contains too many words for a presentation slide. It is not written in the point form, making it difficult for your audience to read and you to present at the same time. And although there are exactly the same number of points on this slide as the previous slide, it looks much more complicated. In short, your audience will spend too much time trying to read this paragraph instead of listening to it. So, this is an example of the slide structure which is not point wise instead things are written in a paragraph when things are written in a paragraph whatever is written in this paragraph 
it is difficult to read it first of all because the lines are too close to each other the line spacing is less second thing the font which is present in this presentation of the paragraph it is to some extent it is causing strain to the eye to read each and every line in the same font where highlights have not been done so if paragraphs are being used they should be small ideally should not be used but if they are used they should be small preferably point wise should be the matter which should be written now another aspect of a good slide structure will be showing one point at a time this type of presentations you must have done you must have seen also where certain presentations in the whole slide only one point will be visible it means the person or the audience can focus only on that point till the time the discussion goes on that point only people will not see anything else on the slide that is also a very good way of presentation it will help the concentration of the audience gaining the concentration of the audience to what you are saying then people usually lose their concentration very quickly if you are just reading and reading from the slides people will say that yeah i know this what's the need of reading it or in many of the presentations in conferences also people just click on the pictures and lose their interest because after clicking the pictures people feel that they will read it from the pictures but that also usually never happens many a times we click pictures and fill up the space in our uh, mobile or camera card but do not usually see what the content was presented so it is always better to get the attraction of the audience by putting less points and discussing more in an interesting manner another thing is if we are presenting any topic which has salient features so if we are discussing a salient feature of a disease for example the wickham's astray in like in planets we are discussing wickham's astray right the in the reticular pattern of like in planets where the crisscross the two lines meet the elevations are seen as wickham's astray or wickham's points over there we do not want the audience to go to the itching part of like in planets or any other variety of like in planets which may be written in the subsequent area of the slide so we want to discuss only that point at that time we do not want the audience to lose interest in that point we have to make the people understand regarding the similar point which can be there in other diseases so we want an interaction that is also helpful if we give the audience one point at a time so keeping the focus of the presentation to that point then another example of a slide structure where it is said to be bad is the presentation in animation actually the animation is presented sometimes yeah the animation is presented sometimes with some sounds which can be disturbing so the use of animation is to be limited non distracting and the animation should be always subtle and consistent whatever animation you are using in one slide of the presentation try to use similar animation in any other slide if it is required do not change the pattern of animations every now and then throughout the presentation okay now animation 
more animation more animation it always gives distraction rather than focusing on the topic so concentrating on the animation which we are using should be the idea do not be uh, taking up too many animations now another or the next point will be the use of fonts what fonts should be used in our presentation uh, most of the times what happens we fancy for the good looking fonts the fonts which look good to our eyes we think that it will always be impressive to others also but as i said in scientific presentation with the peer community we do not impress with the fonts rather than we impress with the matter so the font should be legible readable from a distance and non straining to the eyes so it is said that or it has been seen that at least an 18 point font should be used minimum not less than that different size of fonts can be used for the main points for the secondary points for example over here the font which has been presented in this line is 24 point font the main point font is 28 and the title point is 36 so you can see the difference in the size of the letters of the alphabets another thing is that we should use a standard font like the times new roman or arial for our presentation preferably because they have been used by almost a majority of community and we are used to reading in this font everywhere so they are much, we are much more accustomed to reading this this type of font now bad fonts can be if you are using a very small font the audience won't be able to read what they have written or they'll be focusing too much means glaring on the on the font just stressing and straining on their eyes to just read what you have written so the points should be written in a legible font and capitalization of the fonts should be used only when it is very very necessary because the capital letters are also difficult to read if they are all throughout the text complicated fonts should not be used another reason because uh, we have discussed in the last last slide also that we are not uh, accustomed to the complicated fonts so it will always be difficult to read it even for the presenter also it may be difficult at some time in the presentation to read that complicated font itself then we come on to color when we are using color in the fonts rather than the automatic colors that is black the color of the font should contrast sharply with the background for example the blue font on a white background it is contrasting it will be easily seen then we should use a color to reinforce the logic of our structure it means if for example a light blue title is there a dark blue text can be there that is also contrasting to the background and we can have the same color in the uh, all our presentation then the color to emphasize a point if we want to emphasize a specific point or specific terminology we can color that alphabet we can color that letter or the word so that we can see we as well as the audience we can see it very clearly that it has been written in a different color that means there is something different for this particular point and the uh, presenter himself or herself will emphasize on that point based on the color difference of that point as well as the audience will also be able to understand it easily now what we say as bad colors in the presentation when we are using a font color that does not contrast with the background color which is hard to read it means if we are using a light background as well as a text color which is itself light 
So when a light color is merging with the light color, it is very, very difficult to read that thing. So whenever we are using colors for the text or the fonts, they should be in contrast as we have discussed in the previous slide. The using color for decoration is also distracting and annoying. We should not decorate too much our presentation. Presentation should be as simple as possible in terms of colors. Using a different color for each point is also unnecessary because if we are trying to emphasize upon a specific point by different, different colors, it should not be too much of color for emphasis also because it will not serve the purpose, it will actually defeat the purpose of emphasis. So using a different color for the secondary points is also unnecessary. So minimizing the number of colors in a presentation is also appreciable. So trying to be creative can also be bad as it is written in this slide that we are, if we are using different colors in combination for presenting a particular point that is not going to serve the purpose. We are not doing a drawing class over here. Now we're coming to background. The use of backgrounds such as this one where it is simple and attractive because it is a plain background and with contrasting fonts. So people are able to read it. People are able to uh, focus on it and will not lose concentration easily. They will not be distracted by this background. Now, particularly when we are using the backgrounds, they should preferably be light backgrounds rather than dark ones. When light background is there, it will give the least strain to the eyes. We are seeing on the darker objects in a lighter background. Just like we are able to see clearly and more legibly in the daylight than in the dark. Using the same background consistently throughout the presentation is also one of the criteria which has to be maintained. We should not very frequently change our background. Putting up one or two photographs as a background is acceptable, but putting photograph on every slide will make people lose their interest or somewhat they will get annoyed by changing of background each in each and every slide. This is the example of a ba bad background. Actually, it is said to, it will be said to be a very bad background. In scientific presentations, usually we do not present it in this background. But when companies are providing backgrounds like this, somebody might be tempted to put it in the presentation. So this is an idea of a back, bad background which will never give a contrasting colored font to the text which we are giving. Never, because it is having multiple colors. So avoiding such backgrounds which are distracting or difficult to read from always should be the idea and consistent background as we talked previously should be used which should be simple. Now, this is also one of the things which in many presentations we tend to give just to attract the attention of the audience. But that attraction will be very much short time, short lived because this is a distraction rather than attraction. Presentation of the graphs. Graphical presentation has always been said to be good than charts or words. So if we present data in graphs in the presentations, it is always easier to comprehend and retain than the raw data. So the trends which are easier to visualize in the graphical form, they will be difficult to be seen in the tabular form or difficult to not exactly see, but it will be difficult to comprehend and analyze the data in the tabular form and remember it rather than in the graphical form if we present it. So the graphs should be always given if they are made or if they are made for the purpose of presentation or any other analysis purpose. 
and always your graphs which which you are giving they should be titled means there should be a title of your graphs for the x and y axis as well as what is being shown in the graphs in the presentation so this is a bad example or example of a bad graphical presentation where the graph is not given but a tabular presentation of the data is given so this will not be very much emphasized or impressive data as we say in the presentation if this would have been presentation presented in the manner of a graph be it any form of graph histogram pie diagram uh, the line diagram any form it will be giving much more impression on the page audience or the person who is viewing that presentation much more than the base simple uh, presentation in terms of table so this is also one of the ideas of a bad graphical presentation graphs also can be given in a simple graph and a very complicated looking graph the graph is the same the idea uh, the values will be same but the presentation of graph it differs over here as too many colors have been used for the background of the graph too many grid lines have been or fine grid lines have been used which will hinder the actual data of the graph as we said the minor grid lines which are presented in this graph they are usually unnecessary to be presented in the presentations the font is also too small for the data which is written on the graphs the colors which are there they are illogical they if the colors are not presented as such or plain or simple contrasting colors are presented in the graph they are appreciable the title was not written in the graph as we can see in the previous the title can be written over here it appears if we give the title data to the graphical presentation or the presenter in the powerpoint presentations it will appear over here but is not there shading is also distracting in this graphical presentation so graphs also should be given as a simple presentation then the spelling and the grammar spelling and grammar has been one of the aspects which uh, many people many people in fact many presenters do not look over each and every point there are mistakes in the presentations but why those mistakes are there because the proof reading is not being done because we read the slides ourselves we make the slides ourselves so when we are making the slides ourselves we are reading the slides ourselves we do not find our own mistakes so it is always appreciable if we are making a presentation or documentation of our work or anything which is documented and written by us we should get it read or checked by somebody else that is called proofreading it should be checked for spelling mistakes at first point where the spelling of spelling is wrong the use of repeated words where of has been repeated twice and grammatical errors which we have made this sentence is having a grammatical error so if english is not the first language we should have someone else check our presentation this uh, actually i think is somewhat controversial if we are not having english as our first language it is not necessary that we cannot write good english we can write but the checking and rechecking of our documentation is more important that will bring out the mistakes and if we get it corrected by somebody else that will give us more mistakes which we have overlooked so to conclude with this presentation i will say that our presentation which is made for a scientific purpose it should be having the use of effective and strong closing that means whatever things we have talked about in our presentation should be summarized in conclusion in very brief and 
point wise preferably and the conclusion slide will be having future avenues of research also. So we can suggest something to the audience that if we have done our research till this level, a further research may be needed in the same scenario to reach on a better conclusion or a better result which we have received. What are drawbacks we had in our studies may not be there if we elaborate our study. So at the end of the presentation, after the conclusion, we can put a simple slide for the questions. The audience is invited for asking questions and providing a visual aid. We can provide a visual aid during the question period, which can be a visual slide, anything, just to avoid the uh, abrupt end of the presentation. So this always gives a smooth ending to the presentation with the question answer session. So with this, I also conclude this uh, lecture or discussion today and hope that you may have benefited 